Well hey there my friend, I'm Abby from Abby Kirsten Collections and in this tutorial we're going to be making this fun sunflower basket pop-up card with our Cricut machine. All right, so the supplies you're gonna need to make our sunflower basket pop-up card is going to be some form of cutting machine. I'm using the Cricut Maker 3 here. You can use any full-size machine, so Explore Series will work. Uh, if you own a Joy and you're wondering if you can make this, you can, but do note that the Joy machine has size limitations and it does not score, which means you would need to score by hand. So it is not recommended, though you are more than welcome to give it a try. You're also gonna need to have some form of cardstock, so you want it you want your cardstock in complementary colors for the project you're making. I'm making a sunflower pop-up basket card, so I'm gonna be using browns, yellows, oranges, greens, that kind of stuff. You're also gonna to wanna to have a medium weight cardstock. So I am using the um, cardstock from the 12 by 12 cardstock shop online. It's my favorite online resource for cardstock. You want it to be a medium weight, so 65 pound to 80 pound in weight of cardstock. This one here is their Encore brand. I love the shades of colors that it comes in and it has a very subtle texture to it and it cuts really well on the Cricut. So there's more information linked on that below. You're also gonna to wanna to have um, some glue. So I like the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue for all of my paper crafts and my card designs. That is also linked below for you if you would like more info on that. And then if you're using um, your Explore machine or your Maker machine, you're gonna need something to score with. So if you're using a Maker model, you can use the scoring wheel with the quick swap housing, um, or you could use the scoring stylus, which works with the Makers as well as the Explore models. I'm gonna be opting for the scoring stylus here simply because I like the simplicity of putting it into the clamp A and not needing to pause mid-cut to change blades out in clamp B, but the option is ultimately up to you. I'm also gonna be using a brayer tool here to just press my cardstock material to my mat, so you will also need a cutting mat. I'm using the standard grip grain mat here, but you're welcome to also use the light grip blue mat if that works for you too. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into design space for just a second so I can show you how to set this card up. Let's get it cut out and built. All right, so I just wanna go over some of the basic design space setup so you feel confident when you're making this sunflower pop-up card. You can find this template linked below this video, so go check it out. You can download it for yourself. It is available for all of our members at the Abby Houston Collections community, so I hope to see you there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this example off my screen, and we're gonna start at the upload button, which is where we're gonna bring in our SVG cut file. I'm gonna click on upload and then upload image. You can either click browse your computer to open your file finder and locate where you saved your SVG file, or you can drag and drop the file over, which is what I'm gonna do here. You'll get a preview of the image and you'll wanna click upload. Under recent uploads, you're gonna to wanna to click on the image and then add it to your canvas. Okay, so there's just two main things we need to do here. First, we need to evaluate our scaling and second, we need to set our score lines. So to get started, I want you to right click and hit ungroup. And then I want you to click on the largest piece that we have here, which is the base cover of our card, the outside cover of our card here. And we can see that this is about 10 and a half inches wide. So we know that this standard Cricut machine, if you're using like an Explorer model or a Maker model, those are gonna cut at 11.5 inches by 11.5 inches if you're using the standard 12 by 12 mat. Now, if you happen to have the 12 by 24 inch mat and you wanna be able to make this even bigger, you can absolutely go for it and scale it up. But do keep in mind that you will have certain limitations uh, based on how this largest piece is, um, how large this piece is here on the base. So what I like to do is I'll click on that to evaluate where I'm at already. And we're at 10.5. So I could go up to 11.5 and give myself a little bit of a bigger design, which is what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna start by clicking and dragging over all of this and you want to scale as a group, meaning we're, we have everything selected on our screen. Because if you scale individually, you're going to disrupt the proportions of everything that's going on here and the card's not gonna to come together correctly. So I'm gonna to come to one of these corners and I'm just gonna scale it up randomly here, click off, and then click on this and see where I'm at. So I'm a little over, I'm at 11.65. So I know that I need to go down just a smidge. There we go. Now we're under that 11.5 um, frame of reference for size for what I know my Cricut will be able to handle. So I'm good to go on scaling there. The only other thing we need to do to finalize the setup of this card is to change our, our lines that came in here for the scoring to the score operation. So if you look over here in your layers panel or on the screen here, you're gonna see lines, for example, this one here for the base of our card has three score lines going down the center of it. I'm gonna click on each one of those. I'm gonna hold my shift key on my keyboard and select them over here in the layers panel. Then I'm gonna go to operation and we wanna change that to score. 
because right now it's still set at basic cut and we want it to score, not cut our card in half. So I have those lines now set to score. You can see the result here, as well as the score operation marked here in the layers panel. So once again, I'm gonna click on these holding my shift key on my keyboard. And then I'm also gonna select the base because we need to attach our score lines to the actual object we want it to score. So I'm gonna hold my shift key to select that base. You can also come over here and just click and drag to select the base and the three um, score lines as well. And then I'm gonna click on the attach tool at the bottom of the layers panel. You're gonna see the reflection of our action here in the uh, layers panel where it'll say it's attached these three score lines to that. You'll just wanna rinse and repeat for anywhere else that there are score lines. So for example, this piece here has a score line as well. I can select that, that line, make sure we change it to the score operation, and then we want to make sure that we select the base and the score line and use the attach tool. And you can double check yourself by actually looking here at all the pieces in the layers panel to make sure you got everything you needed to. We can see here that there are some more that need to be changed to score, and then we need to attach them. If this jumps forward on you to where we can see now that this little green is sitting on top here, you can just use your arrange tool to send it to the back and then it'll look like it did a moment ago. You can also use this fun color sync tool over here. So if you're wanting to pare down on the number of shades of colors that you have in a project, feel free to come over here and to um, make that adjustment. For example, it's counting these um, yellow squares and the yellow of my sunflowers as two different shades of yellow but they're in fact very close and there's no need to cut them out on separate mats. So I'm just gonna consolidate those colors to make my life a little easier. Same thing for this here. I don't know why it's making these separate, but we're gonna go ahead and just consolidate that. And it'll pare down on the number of mats that you're gonna have to cut out and therefore the number of shades of cardstock or paper you're going to need. Don't forget to save your project. That way, if you ever wanna make this again, you don't have to do any of this initial setup. It'll just be sitting here waiting to go and waiting to um, be made. So let's go ahead and click on the make it button at the top. You're gonna get a preview of your mats here and then we can click continue and it's gonna connect to our Cricut machine. I am using the Maker 3 here, but you can use the Explore series as well. You could use the Joy series, but do take note that the Joy does not score. So you will have to do all that scoring by hand and I would just delete the score line. So that is something to consider. I am gonna be using a medium cardstock, so that's what I'm gonna select here under my bookmarked um, materials. You can also browse all material options for yourself here. So I would select medium cardstock, and then for anything that is going to have scoring going on with it, for me, I'm using a maker, so it is prompting me to use the scoring wheel, but I sometimes prefer to use the scoring stylus because I don't have to change the scoring wheel out. Um, it's a little bit of a faster process. So I'm gonna click on edit tools, and if you wish to change that, then you can do this process as well by selecting scoring stylus. Also note that if you're using the Explore series, then you will have you will be required to using the scoring stylus because it does not work with the scoring wheel. So I'm gonna just click apply and use that scoring stylus there. And we're gonna go ahead and get this cut out and assembled. Okay, so I'm gonna load up each sheet of my colored cardstock as Cricut prompts me. I'm gonna get my cardstock pressed to my mat here using my brayer tool. Do make sure that you have a sticky mat. A brayer tool can be very helpful if your mat is well worn. Check the health of your blade and all that stuff to avoid anything like ripping with cardstock when you're dealing with these paper craft type projects. I've already selected the medium weight cardstock in Design Space. And I'm also gonna go ahead and put my scoring stylus in now because there's going to be um, mats that we're going to load with our cardstock where it's gonna require us to use either the scoring stylus or the scoring wheel. And I'm gonna use the stylus in this case. So I'm gonna just open clamp A and place that down and then close it, double check that it's secure. And let's go ahead and get our mat loaded here. Cricut's gonna scan your mat so that it will measure the length of it and make sure you have the correct size mat for the project that you have set up. And then it's gonna give us a flashing play icon, might also look like a Cricut C icon. And we're gonna go ahead and press that to proceed with the cut. I'm gonna press that double arrow flashing button to remove my mat. And then we'll go ahead and get all of our little pieces that have been cut out. And now we're just gonna rinse and repeat with all of the other colors until all of our layers have been cut out. I'm gonna do that now and I'll see you on the other side.
Once you get all of your pieces cut out, you should have something that looks like this, of course, in your choice colors. So let's go ahead and set the base parts of our part aside for now. We don't really need those yet. And we're gonna focus on building this part first. I want you to get these two pieces here. This is going to be the first part you're gonna to wanna to focus on. And you're going to notice that there are like these little tabs on these ends. You wanna make sure that you have it flipped the opposite direction so that both of those little rounded tabs are away from each other. So I have one on this side and one on this side. And then you're going to take this slot here and you're gonna feed it into this slot here. So it should look something like that. And then you're gonna bring it to the other side and do the same thing. Interlock the two slots together, just like that. You'll also notice that this part here has a score line on it, so you're gonna to wanna to fold that tab up. And you'll do the same thing on the opposite side. So you should have little tabs sticking out like that. You also need to make sure that you crease here. So technically you probably should do that first. <laughs> Go ahead and crease there and then interlock it. There you go. So that'll be the part that allows the card to actually close. Just like that. Okay, so that's the first part that you need to get done. So it creases right in the center, interlock both sides, and fold the little tabs up. The next step is to grab this piece here. It's gonna have the two little tabs at the bottom, and you want it to have the one circle there in the center, and then the three slots. So look for that piece. And then when you look at this piece here, I want you to identify the two parallel sides that have identical little slots going up there on each side. So right down the center. And you're going to be feeding these little slots into them, just like that. When you're working with pop-up cards, be patient. It takes a little bit of maneuvering to get them to go into place. The more you do them, the easier it becomes. The paper will bend a little and that's normal. You'll also notice there's little tabs here. With these, you wanna fold those on each side so I'm folding these and we're gonna be gluing, tacking those with a little glue right there so that holds that piece in place. So go ahead and grab your Barely Art glue or whatever liquid glue you would like and just add a little bit of glue to that and let it get tucked in there and that way that piece will be secure. Repeat on the other side as well. This little tab here and tuck it. right in there, kind of hold it for a second. And then this whole thing will kind of bounce back and forth a few times as you're building it out. Okay, so this is what you should have so far, something that looks kind of like this. And you wanna grab this piece next. It's the next largest piece that we have left. Notice the little tabs again at the bottom here, okay? What you wanna do is you're going the opposite direction now. So we just added this piece on. Now we're gonna go this way and you'll see one, two, three slots that align. One, two, three here. And you're gonna place those on. The little tabs at the bottom you can bend out beforehand. Okay, so once you get that on like that, you do wanna do the same thing where you add some glue to this tiny little tab that you folded there and then just tuck it into place. That way it holds and it's not shifting around on you. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, so here is what you should have at this point. You have two pieces left. These remaining two pieces are just gonna go through these slots here. So you'll see three slots on this side remaining and three slots on this side remaining. And then you're going to go ahead and place these in. There's not exactly a right or wrong on each side. I would just choose one and put it in. All right, so here's a close look at what we have so far. And if you want to, you can even test the mechanics of it at this point by flattening it just a little bit and going each way. And you'll see 
how that's gonna be able to open and close. Super cool, right? So grab this piece here, you're gonna notice all the score lines. Go ahead and just fold along those score lines there first so we have all of those creased. You're all gonna go ahead and add some glue here to close this once you get those score lines folded. Just like so. Okay, so once you have that brown piece glued together, you want to take the tabs, you want to fold them outwards at the bottom, so they should be facing out like that. And then you're going to take this piece here, and you'll kind of notice how there's sort of a diamond shape here, and it sort of looks like a diamond if you hold it this way. You basically want to set it in like that, and you want these tabs on this side to be matching up with the tab for the brown part of the basket, okay? So go ahead and just get it situated in there. It'll fit snugly, so be gentle with it, and just sort of push it down into place. You can flip it over at this point, and at the base here, you'll be able to see that these tabs, you wanna actually glue them right to the underside of those brown tabs so that the whole thing like, works together now as one piece. So I'm gonna add a little bit of glue on each of those, starting on the one side here. I'm going to glue those and glue those on this side as well. You might need to give it a minute to sort of grab, so be patient before you move to the next step. So once you get it to this point, you can practice closing it by creasing it this way. You can open it up and see how it's gonna open when the card is intact. But I recommend doing that a couple times just to enforce the mechanics of it a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the mechanics of the card part set up here next because I like to have that in place as I'm adding the, um, the sunflower petals to it. So let's start first with this piece here. You wanna go ahead and get that folded down the center. It's gonna have a crease line, so make sure you get that folded. And then open it back up like this. And then as you can probably guess, First, make sure you have this at the front of the card. So you do want it facing forward for wherever side the card's gonna open. You want the little decorative basket piece to be facing forward like this. And then you're going to just slide these into the slots here on each side and tack with glue. So let's go ahead and get those in just like that. And you want to add glue and go ahead and fold that down, press, and do the same thing for the other side of the card. Glue. Fold it down and press. You're gonna probably wanna like let this dry for a minute. It's going to need a second to grab. You're working with a few different layers of paper here, so when you're working with some thicker layers, you gotta give it time to grab and dry. So just take note of that before you start getting excited and opening and closing the card. That's what I did the first time, and then I was like, oh man, it's falling apart on me. So be patient with the glue. Right, there we go. So we have the basic mechanics of the card complete. Yay! So at this point, you can go ahead and attach these two layers together. You'll also notice that there are squares included, so you can take them and make a layer here before you do that, so that you have that pretty peekaboo sunflower effect, which is what I'm gonna do. You don't technically have to put both squares in. You'll notice that there's two. The only reason I do two squares is to keep the evenness of the card. So like the weight of the card, I like to keep it even on the front and the back. That's why there's two squares, um, but if you're like, oh, I only care about having one on the front and you don't wanna waste the extra paper, that's perfectly fine too. So I'm gonna do that at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue. And we'll put that layer in there, just like that. And then the next step will be to add some glue here on both sides. And you wanna place this entire thing onto your card. All right, so here we are at this stage. We have the 
easiest steps left now at this point, and that's just adding on our sunflower layers. So the way this is designed is if you look closely here, and you can look at the file in Design Space 2 the way it was imported to help you with where these sunflowers go. So I would visually refer to that to help yourself. But you'll see these little stems here. You'll see these pieces here. You'll see some blank green down here where you can stick some of the sunflowers as well. So you can be completely free with it. You don't have to follow the design in Design Space exactly as I set it up. But those are just there kind of as a guide. What I recommend doing is you'll notice that there are two colors for the sunflowers. Um, you don't have to cut them out all different colors, but that's how I set it up. And you'll notice that there's a couple different sizes, so pay attention to where you're putting the larger and the smaller. As an example, here are two layers for sunflower and two center pieces here. I'm going to take this big sunflower and I'm going to put it on this piece right here but I'm going to take it so that I sandwich these two together between the green piece so that from either side, it's going to look like a sunflower because the card is multidimensional and could be seen from many angles, right? So I'm gonna start with taking a little bit of glue on this one and go ahead and place it on one of these stems. Feel what that looks like there. And then do the same thing with the other alternating color and then do it on the other side. And as you do it, pay attention to that you're alternating the points of the sunflower so they fall in between each other. And that will create that really pretty like full bloom sunflower look. And then we'll take these little sunflower centers and we'll do one on each side. That way it looks like a sunflower no matter which side of the card you were looking at. And adding those two um, different colors of yellow together makes it look really fun. If you're somebody who likes to use like distress inks or oxides with paper crafts, you could also do that. I did that with this card here. So if you look closely, you can see that there are some, there's some distress ink and shading and coloring going on there. So that can be a really fun option too to play with when you're doing these cards. So at this point, you're just gonna rinse and repeat with all of these sunflower pieces until you've got the design all filled out. Like I said, don't be afraid to put them down here as well. So like this one, I'm actually going to layer this together like this beforehand and put my little sunflower center as well. And then this one, I'm going to tuck and glue right down in here, just like that. So it's more in the base of the arrangement of the sunflower pop-up card. So here is where I'm at at this point in time. The card opens and closes nicely. You can write a personalized message in here. If you like, you can even cut some extra sunflowers and just sort of have some scattered sunflowers on the inside. Or another option that I like is on the back of the card, give it a finishing touch with a little sunflower like that. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, if you're wondering about envelopes, I do not have an envelope that fits this for two reasons. One, it is a very thick card, so getting it into an envelope is challenging given that you would need a very, uh, a very thick envelope for the amount of card that has to go in it. Secondly, if we're making a car, uh, an envelope for this card with our Cricut machine, you would need at least a 12 by 24 inch mat. And I realize that not everybody has that or may not even have a machine that can cut that big. So I don't like to create things that have to have very specific tools or needs to it. What I like to do with my cards is I will just stick them in some uh, on top of my tissue paper in a gift bag. And it's a really fun surprise that they can just open right up. Um, trust me, your recipient will love it just the way it is. 
is because they're super eager to see that adorable little pop-up effect. So here is how my sunflower basket card turned out. It opens and closes nicely. It is such a fun card to make and to, of course, give. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you like these pop-up cards, make sure you check out all our other pop-up card designs. I have more fall ones, as well as additional ones that come out several times a year. All that information, supplies, and more is gonna be linked below for you. I hope to see you there. I'm Abby from Abby Kirsten Collections, your friend in the pursuit of craftiness. Bye for now.